And I realized that I was acting out of fear of folks that I didn't even know. You know, and I'm, I don't know if you've ever heard this quote, but people that mind don't matter and people that matter don't mind. What is up everybody? I'm Dan Martell, serial entrepreneur, investor, and creator of SaaS Academy. And in this episode, I want to talk to you about the fear of your light, the fear of actual success. Everybody wants to talk about fear of failure. I actually want to talk about the opposite. You know, some of you guys may think that, oh, well, I don't want to do this because what if it doesn't work out? What if everybody judges me for failing? You know, what if I take the leap and lose my life savings? And that might be possible. But what also might be true, because two things can be true at the same time, is that you may be afraid of your power. You may be afraid of your greatness. You may be afraid of what you could accomplish because doing that would require you to continue to live at a higher level. Some of you are afraid to achieve new levels because in doing so, you've now told the world that this is the new you. This is the new high level watermark and that can feel scary right? I know for me personally, when it comes to coaching, just the idea of being a coach, I rejected for years, even though I started coaching and advising in my twenties because I started investing, you know, by the time I was, you know, mid thirties, I had invested in over 50 companies as an angel investors, Intercom, Hootsuite, Udemy, right? And, and, you know, I've, I've advised hundreds of founders, Okay, over the years, speaking at events and getting phone calls and making introductions and you know, trying to support other people with my life experiences. Like it was something that I did. It was something I felt called to. And for whatever reason, I just didn't feel, I just, I, I was scared to put myself out there. Even to the point that instead of becoming a coach, I started a company called Clarity because I wanted to build a platform for me but I really didn't know it at the time. And I kind of disguised myself as a tech entrepreneur. And this platform Clarity was, was a marketplace for entrepreneurs to get advice from over other entrepreneurs. And even though we did 50,000, or we had 50,000 experts and hundreds of thousands of calls a year, I still did 1,300 calls in two years. That just shows you how much I was passionate about kind of what I want to do. So, some people call it the shadow career, okay? This is, this is actually a thing out there. You can search shadow career. And I had to go through the personal journey of not only like building clarity, doing these calls, and then finally after clarity, just putting it out there. And, and there's so many different people that came into my life that said, you really need to do this. From my buddy Maltana to my buddy Alex Icon to you know, uh, Travis Houston down in San Diego, like all these incredible people just said like, you really need to do this. I, I love the way you think, I love the way you share, and I would love to hear more from you, but this isn't what you do. Would you consider putting your stuff out there and, and indirectly then started coaching individuals. But um, I share this because after two years of doing this, this is how, how crazy I kinda, I wasn't willing to step into my power. Two years of doing this, I didn't even use the word coach in any of my profiles. It wasn't until clients of mine, I'd worked at that point almost 50 different SaaS founders, helping them scale their business, that they were telling their friends, Dan's my coach, Dan's my mentor, Dan's my coach. And Eventually they were like tweeting at me, tagging me. And I was just like, okay team, we probably need to put that I'm a coach. We, we, at that point we we're starting to build one of the largest coaching organizations for B2B SaaS founders. And I still didn't want to own who I was. And that for me is what I want to share with you because once I owned it, my life transformed. And to this day, not only have I served thousands of SaaS founders that we've coached inside of our program, our videos have been seen from tens of millions of people across all our different platforms. Our content's been consumed by millions of people and none of that would happen if I didn't decide to not be afraid of my light. Cause I wasn't afraid of failure. Okay. At that point, like, I'll be honest with you. Like I had built companies as exit. I knew I could build the company. I was afraid of the judgment. I was afraid of, of trying to be the best at something that I was new to. I was, I was afraid of going through that learning curve. I was afraid of putting myself out there and being rejected. There's one thing to build a product and say, hey, do you guys want this product? Here's what the product does. No, you don't want it. Okay, you're rejecting the product. Hey, here's who I am. Here's what I believe in. Here's what I think is interesting. Here's how I look at life. Do you want this? And they go, no, they're rejecting you. It was a completely different psychological mindset. 
And going through that, I learned a few things. I learned some really incredible lessons. The number one is, you know, th this philosophy that, you know, um, Marianne Williamson has this great quote that our deepest fear, okay, is not that we're inadequate, is that we are powerful beyond measure. Okay, I love that. Our deepest fear is not that we're inadequate, is that we are powerful beyond measure. And I remember I was in Toronto speaking at an event. It was called Archangel Summit. This would have been six years ago, maybe. My buddy Giovanni asked me to speak on stage. And, you know, Gary Vee speaking there, Seth Godin. These are people I'd met over the years that I considered the best of the best. And I wanted to do something different. I wanted to share my personal story, my struggles of like dealing with addiction and prison in my teenage years to learning how to code and, and literally having that transform and save my life. But it was, it was scary. I knew I would have to put myself out there in front of thousands, 2000 people at this event. And I did. And I'll be honest with you, I don't really remember a whole lot. It's captured on video. If you search the power of belief, Dan Martelli, you can watch the video. But it, as it was happening, I prepped, I did my thing, but I just, I gave it to God. I said, God use me as a vehicle to touch and influence these people's lives. And I don't really remember a whole lot. And that night I was at the hotel and it, it really shook me up. Like it, it, it made me realize like, hey, maybe there's more to what I'm doing than just helping SaaS founders grow their SaaS companies, right? Like maybe there's more for me to do. And I ran into my buddy, Philip McKernan, who is, you know, I don't even know how to explain who he is, but he is one of the most powerful thinkers when it comes to just personal alignment and congruence on your life mission and, and your vision and your values and just, so I ended up going to Peru. And because Philip said to me, uh, I went to Peru to work with Philip, but at that night, I, he goes, how did you feel on stage? And I said, I honestly don't remember. And he goes, that was one of the most powerful talks I've ever seen. And I'm not just blowing the smoke up your ass, because I, and he's funny, he's like, and I also gave a talk, so it really hurt my feelings. But the truth is, it just was. And he goes, but I'm not even excited for you. He said, I'm excited, and he, and he pointed past me. He said, I'm excited for all the people that I know you're gonna touch with your story. And I just broke down because I knew he was right and I knew how scary it was. I'd never shared any of that on stage in a public format before. And I just, I, I knew my life was gonna change forever after that. And that belief that you know, you're way more powerful, you know, than you give yourself credit for is such a big one. But the, the, to me, it's like, if you are scared of your light, the first thing is know that you're way more powerful than your deepest fears. But even more important is, is the other people. Like I had Philip McKernan, and somebody that believed in me and other people come up to me. And I realized that I was acting out of fear of folks that I didn't even know. You know, and I've, I don't know if you've ever heard this quote, but people that mind don't matter and people that matter don't mind. Like that's the philosophy that I continue to like go back to. The folks that know me best, what do they say about me? What do they think about me? You know, and the people that don't know me that see me on social media and see me share these messages and, and, and think whatever they want to think, like why do we put so much value on those words when it costs them nothing? We don't know what's going on in their lives. I want to I want to encourage you. That's a second part of the mindset is people that matter, people that that mind don't matter and people that matter don't mind. And to me that's just I think it's Bernard Shaw that said it. It's just such a powerful frame for dealing with external criticism. And then the last thing I want to share with you about just owning your power and shining your light as bright as freaking possible is make a 10-year commitment. And this one's a tough one for a lot of people to decide on. But some of you guys are dabbling. Some of you guys are playing around. Some of you guys are, you know, trying, hoping, seeing if this will work out. You haven't committed. You know, you haven't gone pro. Okay, Turning Pro is a great book. Read it. And I think part of Turning Pro is making a commitment. And for me, I remember the moment I made the commitment. I said, I'm going to do my YouTube channel for 10 years. 10 freaking years. It means I've posted every Monday, nonstop, without missing a Monday, no delays, no excuses for, for I think seven years now. No, like literally 
nonstop, and I will. And I made the commitment. Why? I wanted to put in the time. I wanted to practice. I wanted to impact. Right? I knew that if I wanted to lean into that light and impact and support other people's lives, it was going to require me to get better at a skill. Go back. Go, go back to the beginning and look at the early videos. I know what you're going to find. You're going to find a guy that is just fire hosing. Brrr, he's just screaming at you because I was so insecure. I didn't know if anything I was saying was resonating that I just felt like if I overwhelmed them, they can only walk away going, I don't know what he said, but at least I feel energized. But over the years I've learned, I've, I, I literally have hired coaches, I've worked to the best, and to me, like, it's so inspiring when I go back to look at the Gary V first videos, you know, Wine Library TV, if you haven't watched that, um, go check out the early videos, or a Marie Forleo or a Tim Ferriss, like, go back 10 years, watch the content, see what the production value was when they were doing this, and then look at the video quality and just be like inspired that, that like if they started there, then you can start anywhere. Some of you guys think, well, I gotta get a studio, I gotta do all this stuff. Literally, grab your phone. I don't have my phone on me, but grab your phone, stick it in front of your face and talk to the phone. Go live on Facebook, go live on Instagram. You got 24 hours, it gets deleted. Did it go? I, I started with Periscope. Do something to take action, to shine your light, to put your message out there, even if two people watch and both of them are family members. I wanna encourage you to do that because here's what I believe, okay? This is a Jack Canfield quote that really resonated with me and I wanna leave you guys with this, that everything you want is on the other side of fear. Everything that you desire, every dream, every goal, every outcome that you wanna achieve for your life is only gonna live on the other side of you being anxious and fearful that you gotta do this. But I want you to know that I'm, I'm gonna be your biggest fan. I will support you, I will push you, I will be your biggest cheerleader. I want to encourage you to take the leap, make the jump. Get over that hurdle. Just do something today. That is the call to action. Something today to move this forward. I don't care how small it is. I don't care if you think it's insignificant. If you pile up those insignificant moments back to back to back to back, day over day, day over day, day over day, I'm telling you they're gonna pile up and they're gonna turn into a significant moment. So just watch this whenever you're feeling like, I don't feel like shining my light or I don't feel like I've got confidence or, or what if I, I succeed? What if you succeed? What if you become the best-selling author and now you gotta go on national TV? What if, what if you become the best speaker in the world and now you've got to go travel the world and, and be successful? What if you decide to build that business empire and have thousands of employees that you're responsible for? What if that pressure and noise gets crazy? I want that for you. Because here's what I know. It's not going to happen overnight. And if you're willing to do the work, you will become better. And over the years, you'll become the person who can deal with all of that. And when it shows up in your life, you will laugh at how you used to think about it because you will be so equipped and ready to push on it and to do even more. That'll be the baseline if you're like, no, I'm, I'm here, okay? So I wanna encourage you, shine your light as bright as possible. That's what I have for you today. And as per usual, I wanna leave you with this. I wanna challenge you, live a bigger life. Over here, just live it bigger and build a bigger business. Build the resources, build the infrastructure, build the people so that you can create a bigger world.